Welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to show how you can use the Metabase Open Source BI tool for creating reports and dashboards in GLPI network. So just a quick summary. GLPI Network Edition is a leading open source tool which can be used for asset management, help desk, and ITSM. It supports all standard ITSM features such as service request, incident management, asset management and discovery, change management, problem management, and documents and survey. The Metabase BI tool has been very popular recently, one of the main reasons being that it's an open source tool, easy to set up and manage. It offers out-of-the-box integrations with standard databases such as Oracle, MSQL, and Postgre. It also includes NoSQL databases such as Hadoop, for example. Metabase has a very powerful querying report engine. It has a very easy to use GUI, and it's fairly simple to create widgets and dashboards in this tool. So now what we're going to do is do a walkthrough on how you do the Metabase setup, how you connect with a GLPI network. Secondly, how do you set up queries for your analysis? Thirdly, we'll look at building widgets and dashboards in Metabase. And finally, how to show that in your GLPI network screen. So let's start with the first place. The first step is to basically connect Metabase to GLPI network. And here you need to specify the IP address of the GLPI instance you're going to use. You need credentials to connect and you also need the server IP address of GLPI network. So once the setup is done, you should be able to see all the tables inside GLPI product. So I'm going to switch screens and show you the product now. So what I'm showing here is the GLPI product screen, and then what I'm showing here is the Metabase screen. So I'll start with the Metabase first, and I'm going to show the settings and go to Admin. The idea here is to add a database. The first one is GLPI, right. So I'm specifying MySQL as the source DB, which is being used by GLPI. The host is the local host instead of the IP address, and I would need the name of the GLPI database along with credentials, which allows Metabase to buy into your GLPI tables. Once you've done this, and if the handshake happens properly, you should be able to look at the data model, and what we are showing here is all the databases inside GLPI. And on the left-hand side, you see this is a bunch of data tables, and it's almost 140 tables which are part of the standard GLPI installation. I'm going to look at one example, which is a tickets table. So tickets, and let's look at GLPI tickets. This is the raw ticket data. And what we're seeing here is the table schema, which can be used for writing queries later. There's another view here, which is called as the original schema. This is how the table schema has been defined in GLPI. This is now visible inside of Metabase. This is the first part we are integrating Metabase with the backend MySQL database from the GLPI network. So that's done. Let's get back here. The second step is to create queries for building your analysis and reports. Inside Metabase, the term used is question and it is not called a query. Asking questions is the same as creating a query. When you ask a question, you can apply filters. All this can be done in the GUI itself. There are advanced queries possible, which can be done using SQL. For this, you'll need SQL knowledge, and most BI admin who are working with BI tools already would know SQL. So let me show you how this happens. So back to Metabase, 
and I'm going to get out of the admin mode and go into the normal screen, which is allowed for creating queries. So the first place I'm going to go is look inside all items and look at collections. And here I have a collection, which is my personal collection. A collection is basically a combination of raw table data. Then there is a dashboard, which is part of my collection. Then there are questions which are being used inside the dashboard. There is a new feature, which is called pulses. We're not using pulses in this demo right now. Let's get back to tables. These are all the tables we saw here, and I'm going to create a new question. So let me show as an example, I can have a question here, I can create a new question, and I'm going to just use an existing question, which is show me number of tickets count wise. If I click on that, it's going to take me to the query builder, and here it's possible to write your own queries or edit the question, and I'm going to open this in the query builder. This is the query that is showing how I'm going to create a query. And what I'm showing here is based on SQL, and most often you will be needing SQL in some way or the other to create queries which are of interest to you. So here we've created a query which gives me the list of tickets and it shows me actually number the tickets, so it's a count. So it gives me the count of tickets and the status of tickets is either new or processing. So it gives me a summary of tickets count, which of them are in a new state versus which of them are in processing state. This is an example of a query which has been written. Once the query is written, it's possible to choose your visualization. So you can show this as a line. So I can show this as a bar. This can be a line, can be a pie chart. So the choice of visualization is up to you. And here I think we're gonna go back to area. This is one which has been used by default. Once that's done, the next step would be to add this to the dashboard. So when you wanna add a dashboard, it says which dashboard I wanna to add to. So here you have the choice of adding to a dashboard. This is an example of a query which I showed you. Once a query is done, then you create a dashboard. From the dashboard, you keep adding your queries to the dashboard and it becomes a widget inside the dashboard and you can add as many number of widgets as you like. You can choose options for display. This can be raw data in table format. It can be pie charts, bar charts, and you can make it as colorful as you like. So where do you define dashboards? Back to the tool. So here is the option to create a new dashboard. So let's go back to the previous screen. So here I have the dashboards, and I can create a new dashboard from here. So this is my dashboard now. You can create a duplicate of this dashboard and rename it, or you can move the dashboard or edit the dashboard layout. This is where I'm defining the dashboard, and each and every widget I'm seeing is basically a question, which has been defined, queried, and then added to this dashboard. That's the idea. So this is pretty much what we're going to do. So once the dashboard widgets are being added, you will get a dashboard which looks comprehensively like this. And then the last part now is to integrate with GPLI network. So how do we do that? Going back to the tool, this time I'm going back to GLPI. Under the setup menu, there's an option to do plugins and under plugins, you see there is a plugin which is called Metabase. First thing is to make sure that you have installed the plugin. So once you've installed the plugin, you need to configure this to be able to talk to the GLPI. So in this case, you can enter the reverse credentials where GLPI is now connecting to Metabase. You need the Metabase credentials and the token key, and this is going to be used for integration. Along with that, you're going to get a URL. This is the URL which is going to be displayed for the users to look at. If this integration works correctly, what should happen? The final output should be that in the home menu. Under the dashboard, you should be able to see this screen, which is called Metabase Dashboard. 
If you have multiple dashboards in your Metabase, it will show up in this drop-down menu. And whatever data you've created, whatever dashboards and widgets you've created in Metabase should be reflected here in GLPI. So that is the last step. And if everything works fine, you should be able to see this kind of dashboard inside of GLPI. That's the end of the demo. Thank you for your time.